Today we're looking at a custody court hearing where the mom is asking for more support and the dad is upset because the mom took the kids and moved to another state. So let's see what the judge has to say about this. I haven't seen my kids in probably three years and I haven't gotten my weekends. How much do you make per hour? $40. Do you work any overtime? Last year I got a lot of overtime because of most of the plant went down and we had natural disasters. It's not right for the AG's office to come in my court with these calculations in your lawsuit and just expect me to gloss over them and not look at. It. Dad has to work more overtime hours so he can pay his bills at home. And it's in the interest of Abigail and Julia Bergstrom. At this time, the state will call Miss Roberts. Um, Miss Roberts, um, for your two children that are before the court today, what kind of health insurance do you currently have them on? They're currently on Oregon Health Plan, OHP. And is that is that a plan that you get through the state of Oregon? It is, yes. Okay. Uh, what what and 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 what kind of health plan specifically is this? Like a Medicaid plan. Do you have any access to any um, private health insurance that's affordable to you? Um, my husband just got a job, and so we're switching over to his health plan at least over the course of the next six months. Okay. Do you know what the cost of that health plan would be? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Okay. And are you um, asking the court today to um, order Mr. Bergstrom to pay uh, child support according to the guidelines based on his uh, current income? Yes. Mr. Bergstrom, do you have any other minor uh, biological children that are below the age of 18? Not biologically. I have my wife's two kids that live with us that I'm the sole provider for. And um, are you paid hourly there? Yes, sir. How much do you make per hour? Forty. Forty dollars. Hmm. And then um, do you work any overtime? Last year, I got a lot of overtime because of most of the plant went down and we had natural disasters. But on normally, I'm only scheduled to work 42 hours, which is only two hours of overtime. How much overtime do you do on average um, each week? Uh, it depends on what breaks or whatever's uh, going on in the plant, but most of the time it's usually only about 10 hours. And uh, are you paid time and a half for overtime pay? Yes, sir. Okay. Does your employer um, offer health insurance um, that you can enroll your children on? They do, but it's uh, outrageously overpriced. For a, uh, just me and my wife, it would only be 200 but for a family of four or more people would be over $432 a week. What were you doing at the time that the uh, previous order was done back on um, January 20th of 2011? Working construction, the okay. same job that I do now. I just had a lower rate of pay, which I was a pop fitter, and that's usually $32 an hour. I have a... No further questions. I pass the witness. Can you hear me, Mr. Bergstrom? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Bergstrom, I read your answer. And uh, what you really wanted to point out in your answer was about your overtime, okay? Yes, sir. I have to point out to you, Mr. Bergstrom, that while I understand being in the construction field a long time in my life, that overtime is not guaranteed, you are earning it. And as such, your child support has to be calculated on it, okay? I mean, that's the law of the state. And so if you have a history of earning overtime, Mr. Bergstrom, then I have to use that as part of the calculation. Right now, Ms. Roberts, the children are effectively receiving state, med state Medicaid from the state of Oregon. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, Ms. Roberts, is there anything else you think I need to know about this case before I make a ruling? I don't think so. All right, Mr. Bergstrom, is there anything else that you think I need to know about this case before I make a ruling? I haven't seen my kids in probably three years, and I haven't gotten my weekends in the past 11. And that's because they moved to Oregon? Yes, sir. All right. So I'll tell you this, even though I can't help you with regards to that issue, Mr. Bergstrom, when the children were uprooted from the state of Texas and moved to Oregon, you should have taken steps at that time to stop that. You had a right to stop it. Okay. The, the mother is not allowed to just uproot the children and move them 2,500 miles away. Okay, so I get that it's not right for one parent just because you split up 
to move anywhere. Like, don't even move to one county over without talking to me. But to move to Oregon from Texas, that's pretty far. That's not right. That's messed up. It's not right for the kids. I wouldn't do that. Um, however, the fact that he did not bring this up until she's asking for more child support you didn't care until she asked for more child support you got a new wife and just took in her two kids and moved on so you did not care you haven't gone to oregon to see them in three years like i understand that that's a um she's the one who moved but your kids didn't choose to move your kids just went with their mother so if i missed my kids if i cared about my kids and just wanted to see them I would go to Oregon. So obviously there was some kind of case. There was some kind of plan put in place. You've been to court sometime, or at least she went. And whatever default ruling was put in that said you get every other weekend or whatever their case is, you accepted that. But now you're mad that she moved to Oregon because she's asking for more child support? Okay. 100 miles away without getting the court's permission to do so, okay? Because that had a drastic impact on your ability to be a dad. But you don't get to use that as a defense against the child support that I'm about to set, okay? You should have taken legal action at that time to protect your rights to you having time with your kids. Although I do understand it and do agree with you on that. That's why we have new rules in place, Mr. Bergstrom, that basically stop parents from being able to uproot kids and move into a 2,500 miles away. But it does place a burden on you, Mr. Bergstrom, to take some legal action to stop it from happening. Anything else, Mr. Bergstrom? No, oh, sir. All right. Um, I don't agree with the state's position in regards to this lawsuit. Their calculations are completely incorrect and inaccurate. I don't know, have any idea how they're charging Mr. Bergstrom an attempt to pay $500 a month in insurance and $150 a month in dental when there's no proof that the mother has any private health insurance on these kids or that there was any proof of private health insurance to begin with. Um, she just testified before me in open court that the children are on Medicaid, and that's okay. That's what it's there for. Um, but I, $650 a month for health insurance that's, doesn't, that's not in place? How did y'all do that, Mr. McNulty? I, I can't speak for um, the, the like, specific. The problem is, Mr. McNulty, is, is that you are the legal representative of the attorney general's office. You should be able to speak to that issue. It's not right for the AG's office to come in my court with these calculations in your lawsuit and just expect me to gloss over them and not look at. It, OK, um, yes, your honor. Mr. Bergstrom testified that he is not guaranteed the amount of overtime, but he did admit to me in court that he basically makes about 10 hours a week, that that's where he gets. And that's what I'm going to set it at. Child support set at uh, $1,770 a month plus $300 a month in cash medical. Ms. Roberts does have the children on Medicaid in the state of Oregon, so that would be an additional child support figure. Those payments will not begin, however, until March the 1st of 2024. That's when the adjustment will be. OK, all other issues in the case will be set. But I do want the changes made to the insurance provisions and the, the child support is based on uh, nine thousand five hundred and thirty three dollars a month gross. So that's basically his base plus the 10 hours of overtime that he testified to he would make. How much is that going to move it to a week? Uh, good question. Can you give me a second? Let me calculate it for you, Mr. Bergstrom. Yes, sir. All right. I'm not as fast as this as I used to be. And it's going to be about four. It's based on a four week plan, correct? No, it's actually a 4.3. There's actually 4.3 weeks in a month. Okay, so it's going to be about $425 a week. I got 477 is what I got. 1770 plus 300 times 12 divided by 52 weeks. Yeah, $477.69. It's the medical insurance, Mr. Bergstrom, that's going to hurt you because that $300 a month that you're paying to the state of Oregon for their Medicaid program, is that's where it is. So I'm now going to have to up my amount of hours I work a week to about 60 to where I can actually cover that and my actual bills I have at uh, home now. Mr. Bergstrom, uh, while I understand what you're saying, you know, the, the other option that you have is 
if you put your children and your wife's children all on the same insurance plan, then you will have to pay that out of your pocket. I get it, but you would pay pay three hundred dollars a month less in child support. Her her two kids are court ordered to be on Medicaid for the rest till they turn eighteen. So I don't. No, have they to come they on. are actually not. There is no such thing as a forced order for Medicaid. There is no court order in the state of Texas that forces parents to stay on welfare. That does not exist. Uh, that was the law done in the for... state. Of, the law in the state of Texas is is the parents are supposed to have health insurance on their kids. If they have it from someplace else, that's perfect. But if they don't have it anywhere else, then they can have Medicaid. That's the law of this state, Mr. Bergman. All right, that's the order of the court. They'll send it to me. They'll make a copy of it and send it to each of you. And then you, you'll you have it for your records. Uh, obviously, the child support is going to reduce down some, Mr. Bergstrom, once you, one of your children, I believe, is going to graduate or emancipate here shortly. All right. You're both free to go. I thank you for being here today. I'm sorry I wasn't able to give you all each what you wanted, but that's the laws of this state. And that's kind of how it goes. What do you guys think of this case? Do you think the judge is right? Do you think that the dad cared that his kids moved to Oregon or he only cared once the child support was increased? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.